Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to walk you through our brand new unit tests feature. Unit tests are a crucial part of application development and allow you to be able to make sure at any time that your application and all of your APIs will always behave as expected. Building unit tests is never an easy task. Just ask any of your traditional developer friends, it's probably the thing that they hate the most. In Xano, we wanted to make building tests for your application as simple as possible. You can build your unit tests in Xano with just one click, and I'm going to show you how it works right now. So here we are in one of my APIs. It's obviously very simple, but it helps to illustrate the example. So I have an input here, which is just expecting an integer, and then I have a create variable step. And all this does is add one to that input and then we return the result in our response. So when we run this, we'll give a one for our input and we get a result of two. Now let's say we've made all of the changes we need to to this function stack. It's ready to go, working as expected. That means it's time for us to build a unit test. So in Xano, from our run and debug panel, we can click this button that says create unit test. And just like that, Xano has taken the elements from our run and debug session and use those to populate a new unit test. It has our input here with a value of one and then our expect statement, which is essentially what do we need to see for this unit test to be considered a pass. In this example, we are looking at our response and we're just looking for a value of two. So if the input is one, the value is two. We can click this play button here and we can see that test is a pass. If we change our expect statement to three, so maybe with an input of one, we should get an output of three and we hit this button again, we can see that the test fails and we know that that is the case because the expected value of three, which is right here, does not equal two, which is what the API actually returned. So let's go ahead and change this back to two and we'll give our test a name. We'll call it, this should be two and we'll click save. Let's build another unit test, shall we? We'll add a new API endpoint We'll call this unit test two. And I'm essentially just going to do the same thing. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you the testing suite. Obviously it's cool that you can go and test your APIs one at a time, but what if you want to give your entire application a pass before you push a bunch of changes live? You can do that too. And we're going to look at that here in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. We'll take our input and let's subtract one this time. So now when I run this, I'm going to put an input of two. And when we run this, we should get an output of one. Looks great. Let's build our unit test. This should be one. Make sure everything is good. Looks great. So now we've made all of the changes we want to, to our APIs. We've built our unit tests using the one click option in run and debug. And now we want to give our entire application a pass of those tests, just to make sure that everything is working as expected before we push our changes live. We can go over here to our library tab and we can access our entire suite of unit tests here. In this testing suite, you can see how many tests you have built. You can also view what's called coverage, which is how many of your APIs, functions, and middleware actually have unit tests built for them. So this just gives you a quick overview of where you still need to create tests. So for example, if we click on this API group default, I actually have a ton of APIs in here and we can see that most of these do not have tests built for them. We can see though that these two APIs here that are just called unit test have those tests that we just built a few minutes ago. So when we're ready to run all of the tests for our application, we just click run all tests up in the corner. Give this just a second and we can see that we get a two out of two success rate, which is great. That's what we want to see. We also get an idea of the average runtime for all of these tests to run. We can see, however, that we only have 13.33% coverage, which is not great. We definitely would want to make sure that we go back and build tests for the rest of our function stacks. In the testing suite, you can also get a quick overview of what is untested, what is tested, and only the function stacks that have failed as well, just to give you an opportunity to quickly drill down and see where you need to place your focus to make sure that you have full test coverage and success. Now, of course, one-click test generation is great, 
But what if you want to get a little bit more creative with it? You can do that too by heading into the function stack that you want to build a test for. Just click the options in the upper right hand corner and choose testing. And now we can add a test here and we can do whatever we want. So of course, if it doesn't make sense for you to use run and debug to specify the parameters of your test, you can build your own from scratch very easily. So we'll just call this from scratch. And I want to take you through a couple of these options here in this add test panel. You can, of course, add a description to your test, which is always recommended to make sure that things stay organized. You can choose the data source that your test runs against. This section will always have the inputs that are defined in your API. And then we have our expect statements, which again is just what are we looking for to call this test a pass. Now we can add multiple expect statements to a single unit test, and there are a ton of different operators here that you can use. So we have anything from booleans, date and times, uh, defined equals, uh, checking for null, numbers, regex, strings, arrays, uh, or we can check to see if it throws a specific error. There's a ton of flexibility here in how you build your unit tests. And again, you can add multiple expect statements to a unit test. You can test them individually or all at once. We can, of course, remove any tests that we don't want to run anymore. Nice and simple. Save our changes and we're all set. That's just a quick overview of the new unit tests feature in Xano. We hope you love it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also reach out to us in the Xano community at community.xano.com or via support chat inside of Xano. We'll see you in the next one.